As the avid viewers of this show know, when you see a monkey, you're supposed to drink. And that rule still stands true in this show, but I'm gonna make you guys also drink when, when you see that. <laughs> Friends! All right, maybe not. Hi, I am Zane Lamprey. I guess you probably know that by this point. Uh, this is Pumpkin. This is our first foster fail that our uh, animal rescue is named after. Pumpkin Patch Pet Rescue. Dot com. Go there if you want to donate. Uh, this is the episode in the Philippines, which um, was amazing and weird. Um, the first thing that I wouldn't eat, Balut, the Hobbit House, and then pretty much everyone's favorite toast, Mabuhai. Warning, if you ever get lost in the Philippine jungle, don't expect this guy to do you any favors. <laughs> You'll see more of that later, but first, the Philippines, an island nation in the South Pacific with Asian, Spanish, and American influences. It's a cultural melting pot. But I come here for something uniquely Filipino. The focal point of my journey, the local, the legendary Lambanog. From the backwoods version that instills fear in those who face it. I'll drink first, then you. Yeah. To the panoply of colorful, sugar-coated offspring that has spawned. Bubblegum flavored lambanum. I will not rest until I've tried it all. And while I'm at it, maybe I can invent a drink. You need to have a drink called the Flaming Frodo. What's that? I don't know. Master some rituals. And live to tell you all about it, maybe. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna die or anything, right? Do I have the fortitude to endure the journey of the jungle? Ah, something landed on me. It's a veritable three sheets, real in Manila. When I go, three sheets! For my first night in the Philippines, I'm in the capital city of Manila. Smack dab in a neighborhood that is perfect for our show. Right now I'm in Malate, which is uh, the party place. It's the place to be if you want to party. And so... <laughs> I'm ready to warm up for the evening with a taste of the local brew and a little snack. The cart noodle looks like the perfect place for a nice, tasty treat. Or at least I think it's going to be a tasty treat. Do you watch the show? Do you know who I am? Shane. I know Shane, you. yep. Yeah, Shane. Shane. Shane, Shane Lambert. Shane Lambert. Yep. Yeah. This is Bernard. He owns the place. This, I like to call, I'm gonna show you what I got in here, because you can't see, but I have. Hey, yeah. it's a beer! What do you got? What is that? Ah, I didn't see what it was. Awesome, I can see there gonna be a lot of high fives tonight. Bernard's <laughs> hoping the beers will give me liquid courage, because he has plans for me that will require bravery. Something the locals consider to be the perfect accompaniment to a night of drinking and something that outsiders like myself think of as, well, scary. For now, I enjoy the beers, completely oblivious to what lies ahead. <laughs> the San Mig Pale Pilsner is the top-selling beer in the Philippines. It has a distinctively hoppy character with a bitter finish. You wanna high five me? I'll high five you. All night long, baby, all night long. <laughs> the San Mig Light is lower in calories, yet still has a fairly <laughs> robust flavor as far as light beers go. With a 5% alcohol content, it's a lot stronger than typical light beers. High five! High five! High five! High five. And in Bernard's mind, it's the perfect precursor to something that makes outsiders tremble. What do you got? Let me see, let me see. Warning, if you get queasy easily, you might want to turn away from your TV because this will get ugly. Ugly duckling, you see, ugly. Yeah. Is it a, from a chicken? From the, no, from duck. Is it duck egg? It's said to be an aphrodisiac. Oh, that is so gnarly. I call it a freaking nightmare. As a warm up, my host primes his palate with a little, we'll call it duck juice. I can't! <laughs> no, 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 it's good. It's good for uh, a tradition. Next, it's time for the hearty stuff. Like a oh, 
Okay. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I see. I, 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 I get it. Put it like this. Oh, Salt. yeah. Salt's gonna, salt's gonna make yeah, it better. Yeah, yeah better. I can't salt do it. Easy for you, dude. Not me. Mm. Oh my god. That is so yeah. gnarly. Yeah. Okay, now you go ahead and eat it. I can't bring myself to eat it at this point because I'm gonna tell you why. I have a duck at home. Oh, yeah. I have a duck named Steve, yeah. Steve McKenna. Yeah. Stephen McKenna. It's couple. Yeah, you know Steve McKenna? Yeah. That's the name of my duck. So I, ha I, I can't do this because it reminds me of Steve. What? But what I can do Wait, is drink San Mig. Yeah, too. Bye. All right. Bye. So I'm out. Ah. Oh, you got oh, me! Guys. This is my ride. Yeah, I'm out. yeah. Bye, my friends. Okay, so I've had the local beer, but that's not why I came all the way to the Philippines. I'm here for the real stuff, Lambanog. So I ditched the roadside vendors and hit the Abbas Bar and Grill. Hey, here's a table of people engaging in local customs. Neato! How are you guys? And of course, they have some buckets of the local favorite. But I'm after a different local favorite. I want to see what this Lambanog stuff is all about. Lambanog is one of the most famous drink in the Philippines. I wasn't expecting neon blue. Now, I'm just gonna let you guys know this is bubblegum flavored Lambanog. Actually, that is uh, the modern time Lambanog. The who? Modern time Lambanog. Hmm, if this is modern times Lambanog, then that means there's also an old time Lambanog too. Which I fully intend to try, even if it involves a long hike across a scary bridge with a funny hat on. That's right, Zane. I'm now in the jungle where you're gonna be tomorrow trying this stuff. So have fun with your friends. Cheers. <laughs> For now, I think the modern time stuff is probably a good introduction. What's it taste like, bubblegum? Yeah. 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 It's certified taste like bubblegum. You know? Coming up, my Lambanog initiation. That's your One, two, three. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Will it be enough to convince this guy to give me a job? I need, I need short people, not, not, not long. Oh, hello. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Pleplius.com. That's P-L-E-E-P-L-E-U-S dot com. <laughs> I'm in the city of Manila, on the verge of my very first experience with Lambanar. Yeah! A traditional Filipino spirit that comes in varying degrees of strength. This particular one is only 50 proof, or 25% alcohol. We'll call it booze for beginners. All right, you want to know what this stuff tastes like? Oh. Go out and buy yourself a very inexpensive bottle of vodka and soak a couple pieces of bubble gum in it overnight. Oh, look at that face! This is a flavored Lambanog, and this is interesting because it creates a new twist to your old-fashioned Filipino cocoa vodka drink. Cocoa vodka? What? Hey, uh, professor, wake up. Drop some knowledge on these folks. What? Who? Oh. Lambanog is not vodka. It comes from the cocoa palm plant, hence the word cocoa. The only reason they call it cocoa vodka is to compare it to vodka, allowing the consumer to know that, like vodka, Lambanog is a spirit and gets people like you drunk. Back to you. Though it comes from the coconut tree, it tastes nothing like coconuts. It gets most of its flavor from the watermelon sweetener. And the more the modern times Lambanog gets passed around, the more the good times roll. Whoa! Maybe a little too much. I want to sleep in your room. Oh! 
So, after a quick escape, I duck into the one and only Hobbit House, a famous Manila establishment that gives new meaning to the phrase mini bar. <laughs> I couldn't get a job here, right? Because I'm too tall? You have to be short, short people, yeah. Yeah. I need, I need short people, not, not, not long. The problem is I'm tall and I'm also uh, long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. This is the manager. Mabuhai. Mabuhai, mabuhai to you. Here, the staff is little. Hey, there's a monkey in my pants, look at this. Is that a monkey in my pants or are you just happy to see me? And the drink selection is large, but there's one thing missing. You know what you need? You need to have a drink called the Flaming Frodo. What's that? I don't know. Sometimes when I travel around the world, I make up fun drinks. It's time I swing into action. Lambanog plus fire <laughs> plus San Mig equals the Flaming Frodo. Okay. That's why they start. Yep, I think that'll work. Time to get the boss man's approval. There we go, there's a frame of flower, let it go! Uh, very nice. My work here is done. I've had the modern Lambanog. I even invented a new drink. But I'm told that tonight was child's play. <laughs> and that the old school Lambanog that I'm in search of blows away the modern time stuff. I think it's time I call it a night. <laughs> the next morning, I'm ready to road trip. I journey by car to the Kazan province. <laughs> The drive is the easy part. I was told to walk a half mile through these rice paddies to this place, and then I was also told to get the dorkiest hat I could, and I think I did a pretty good job, thanks. The Quezon province is the country's leading producer of coconut palm products, and one of those products is the ever important cocoa sap used for making Lambanog. Listen up, people! And this is where it's harvested through a rice field across probably one of the safest bridges I've ever been on, and uh, into the jungle. Speaking of safety, you know more tourists are killed from falling coconuts every year than tigers and lions and bears and sharks all combined. For the harvesters out here, falling coconuts are the least of their worries. Do you want a ladder? Do you want a boost? Let me help you out. He's gonna walk. He's after the stems that once held the coconuts. Canisters catch the sap as it slowly drips from the tightly bundled stems. Each time the sap is collected, the stems are cut back, and the canister reattached to collect more sap. Then it's a balancing act to the next tree via some bamboo rods. For more hard-earned drops of liquid gold destined to become Lambanog. The juice, or tuba as it's called, is allowed to ferment about a day and a half. To find out what happens from there, meet Abelardo, the Lambanog Man. Armed with some rubber tubing, a fire pit, and a copper pot, he has all the weapons needed to distill one of the deadliest potions I've ever had. <laughs> First, he shows me the weak stuff. A single distilled Lambanog. A mere 90 proof. Wimp. And after 90 proof, after 90 we proof. stop distillation. Yes, and it is ready for market. Okay. Local market. Okay. Local. The single distilled Lambanog that does not go to market is moved into this room for a second distillation, yielding a more uh, purified product. So this is stronger. Yes. Stronger. This is what you yes. drink. Yes. Yeah! Yes! Yes, yeah. But just how strong is it? 
This is 83 times two. Times two. Yeah, 160. So this is about 166 proof. So that was the coming from the second distillation. Holy. After. <laughs> it's 166 proof. Yes. That's the strongest drink we've ever had on our show. I'll drink first and. Okay, you're gonna show me how it's done. Okay, in my travels on the show, I have found that most connoisseurs are particular about how their beverage's choice is consumed. I might be expected to hold a certain glass in a specific way, eye the beverage for consistency and clarity, release the bouquet and nose the character. Then, and only then, after all that, sip with finely tuned attention to detail. That's how it usually goes down. But here, with Abelardo, the Lambinog man, it goes down like this. <laughs> you just pour it back. Ah! <laughs> so hard! <laughs> Try one. Okay, this could be painful. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Whoa! You want to drink one more? Okay. <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> I'm not going to die or anything, right? I don't know, no. You don't know? No. You don't know or no, no? No. Dying. We're not dying. Yes. You know what we're doing? We're partying. Hey. You and me, baby. Let's go party someplace else. Come on. Bring that. Bring that with us. Okay, I finally tasted the real thing. But there are traditions surrounding its consumption that I still need to experience. Coming up. What the hell is this guy talking about? Para sa demonyo, we call it. Yeah. Para sa demonyo. Oh, hello. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Pleplius.com. That's P-L-E-E-P-L-E-U-S dot com. <laughs> right now, I'm in the Quezon province of the Philippines, getting ready to drink with some of the makers of Capistrano Lambinog. Luckily, this is a commercially available single distilled Lambinog, and not the fire water that scalded my tonsils earlier in the day. Lambanu! I'm about to experience customs that have been around for centuries. The first chat goes to the devil. Para sa demonyo, we call it. Yeah. Para sa demonyo, for the devil. For the devil. Okay. The second shot goes to me as the tanguero. All right. Okay. I don't know goes whose rules the these are. <laughs> Maybe goes I want to be the tanguero. You want to be the tanguero? What's the tanguero? Tanguero makes the uh, the pouring of uh, lambano to the shattered glass. Should I try it? Yes. But see. before that, yeah. we ask our uh, co-drinkers yes. if they have eaten. So, ang, we call that nagsapin ka na ba? So, let me try. So, I'll try that. Nagsapin ka na ba? Nagsambik ka malang mamun. When Filipinos sit down to have drinks, food is a must. So, we call this pulutan. Pulutan is their word for food intended to be eaten with alcohol. In this case, a whole chicken stuffed with rice and stewed. Delicious. The purpose of pulutan, of course, is to help metabolize the alcohol, so your belly doesn't hurt when you drink so much. <laughs> Can I throw it back? Okay. Okay. Wow. The tongero picks who drinks next. But if you get a glass sent your way, yes. apparently you can bust out in song and redirect the drink back to someone else. You. So I'll give it to my friend who I think likes the brew. <laughs> For you, buddy. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice. Hey, it's gone. I can't escape the fact that they want me to do most of the drinking. Am I taking it from yes, her? Yes. She's giving it to me. Yes, yes. But but she but it was it's hers. Because I love you. What? Give me a hug. Give me a hug. I want a hug. Ready? 
tasted like love. Actually, this 90 proof bottle of Lambanog tastes like, well, 90 proof alcohol made from flavorless stems. Now I see why they add flavor to the so-called modern time stuff. But there's something about drinking it with these people that takes the edge off. I'm starting to get it. Yes, Lambanog is a powerful drink that could easily do you in. This is for my homies. Oh. But years of experience with it has led to customs that bring people together, yeah! help regulate its consumption, and encourage a happy, well-controlled drinking experience for everyone. <laughs> well, except for maybe me. I didn't really eat too much Pugaton. And these people have no idea I was downing 166 proof double distilled Lambanog back at the distillery. I'm not sure what tomorrow will bring, but I can tell you this. Heat uh, plus Lambanog equals exhaustion. Good night. Yeah, what happened? Okay, here's what's going on. I'm just outside of Manila at the Balao Balao restaurant. The restaurant's so nice, you call it twice. I'm hoping they have something that can undo the damage done by the Lambanon. I just have one request. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything, any little ducks. I don't want any baby ducks. I, I know what you're talking about. Thank you. Let's not even talk about it. <laughs> Balao Balao specializes in traditional Filipino cuisine. This is delicious, and I could eat these all day. Fried shrimp, no problem. Shrimp ceviche, mm, tastes like pickled shrimp. Frog's legs, tastes like chicken. It's good. It's good. But I'm not so sure about these dudes. Beetle larva, which of course lives off the coconut trees, Damn those coconut trees! And damn my crew for not warning me about this. When was this alive? Five minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> God, you can't say that to me. I don't think I'm gonna eat one of those things unless they do no, it you first. Just eat it. Just eat it. Just eat it. On the count of three, you're gonna put it in your mouth. One, one two, three. three. And don't run away and vomit. It was alive five minutes ago. It's a worm. It's a squiggly worm. It's grub. It's a caterpillar. <laughs> it's in your mouth. It's really good. Oh. Oh, that's his second. Don't eat them all, because I need to be able to eat one. Okay, that blew up in my face. Yeah, that's the first time my crew, my crew has ever showed me up like that, and I wasn't prepared for it. I already passed on Baby Duck. <laughs> ah, I don't want to eat a caterpillar! So there's no escaping the caterpillar. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Hangover? Who's thinking about a hangover? I just ate a worm. I, I usually get uh, drunk and then I have a hangover and I've had a, a, a myriad of, of remedies and I would say this is probably the most exotic. The most exotic. Yeah, so I feel great. I'm actually a little confused. <laughs> as opposed to being hungover. <laughs> so I'm gonna go have a drink. Wow, talk about an adventure. Yes, I wavered early on. I'm a little nauseous by it. It's, 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 a, it's a duck embryo. But come on, it was, a, it was a baby duck. I braved terrain. I braved a drink that could be easily used to degrease a tractor engine. Gave the devil a buzz. Para sa demonyo, for the devil. For the devil. Mastered the art of being a Tungaro, so I'll give it to my friend who I think likes the brew, and invented a drink. Uh -oh. Oh. The Philippines, home of the craziest looking buses on earth. <laughs> I have no idea why. Three cheers, Philippines! <laughs> Eating here is you experience two arts, the art of flavors and the flavors of art. That looks like a caterpillar. And go, go here. That's me, that's mine. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just so stupid. Yeah, I know. Go. You look like Steve McKenna. All right, you're, you're not Steve McKenna. 